What's going on guys, it's Unknown Player here in this video, we'll be rounding up all the latest Destiny news and everything going on recently for the game and some of the cool things coming up we've got to look forward to in the near future. So I've got some info about Iron Banner like the date and the loot up for grabs, also Trials of Azaris, a new patch that changed some things in the game today, and also some more info about what Bungie are working on in terms of fixes that you should probably be aware of, so a lot of info in this video to go over. So firstly, Bungie reminded us that Trials of Azaris is actually tomorrow, of course the weekend starting the 30th. It's going to be 10am Pacific time or 6pm in the UK, the usual time it's normally on. A lot of people were hoping or thinking it might be delayed because of how high light level people were. A lot of people thought it might be unfair seeing as people are like 387, they might do a lot more damage than people that are like 360 or 70. But I guess they're not delaying it and it's going to be going on as usual. So it'll be interesting to see if people have a massive advantage with their light level. Of course, I'll be here playing through trials myself. Hopefully you'll get a nice, simple, flawless run without any serious sweat or lag. But we'll see. It's really down to matchmaking. So hopefully we get some good, simple runs. And I'll do the usual highlight videos if we do, if we get some nice games in. And of course, videos as well showing off my loot. Also, the map is classified for now, so it's going to be a surprise until it comes out. My personal guess is Floating Gardens. I feel like it's got to be one of the new maps that came in Rise of Iron. There's three of them. Obviously, it can't be the PlayStation exclusive one being Icarus. So comment down below, what do you think the map is going to be for Charles? My personal guess is Floating Gardens. They may just do something original like Burning Shrine, but let me know what you think about it in the comment section. So next up, let's talk about Iron Banner. So the official date for it is next Tuesday, October the 4th, at the usual time of 10 a.m. Pacific time or 6 p.m. UK. The game mode is of course Supremacy, which we already know, so be prepared for a lot of shotgunners and a lot of really aggressive players, it's definitely not time for sniping. So they gave us a list of a bunch of info about Iron Banner and how the tournament is going to run, and I'll also go over the gear as well and what weapons and armor we can expect. So the tempered buff is gone, you can play it whenever you want. There are now four weekly bounties instead of the rank 3 and 5 packages, and you can see them on screen here which I showed in my last video, but I'll go over them again real quick. Two of the bounties give you an Iron Banner weapon and two of them give you an Iron Banner armor piece and they'll drop items that aren't featured in this current Iron Banner so the vendor won't be selling them and you get some cool stuff that is unique. Also you'll have a chance at an Iron Banner artifact and a vanity item. Hopefully the artifact goes up to 385, that'll be really cool because they're hard to get hold of. And you'll also get 25 legendary marks, 750 Iron Banner reputation, a victory in a match grants 250 reputation and when you get a loss and turn in the Iron Medallion on a win you get 150 reputation upon the victory. So in terms of weapons, we have the auto rifle, as you can see right here, and also the shotgun. Now you might notice these are very similar, if not pretty much the same as the Iron Lord weapons, and it's very hard to tell the difference. Essentially, they both are pretty much reskins of each other, but they've got slight differences. If we compare the Iron Banner shotgun to the Iron Lord shotgun, we can see they're basically the same thing, but of course the differences are in the colouring, and the Iron Banner weapons have a kind of like a white handle to them. So there's a slight difference between the two weapons. They are very similar, but not to be confused. They might have different archetypes, so one of them might be high impact and low impact and different rate of fires. They are definitely looking very similar, but the Iron Banner weapons always have the white handles. That's a good way to tell. Now in terms of the armor pieces, we're going to be getting the class items and the gauntlets. Those are the two armor pieces up for grabs, and that is everything you can expect with Iron Banner. Of course, like I said, with those four weekly bounties, when you turn them in, you're going to get something that isn't sold by the vendor. So you could get the sniper rifle or like the scout rifle or something that isn't being sold. That is really cool. You can get them. And of course, they're going to be dropping up to 385. So Iron Banner, as usual, is going to be a very, very good way to get loot. And it's going to be one of your best ways to get infusion fuel and rank up all of your characters really quickly. If you've got a chance next week, make sure you hop in. Iron Banner is definitely going to be a ton of loot. And of course, I'll be making videos showing off my loot and recommendations of the weapons, the rolls and stuff like that. So also a patch came out today which fixed a couple things in game. They fixed the Abomination Heist and also the Winter's Run Strike. Apparently they were not dropping items at the right light level. I think I noticed it as well, the Abomination Heist was not dropping items above like 350. It was very strange that they fixed that now so it should be dropping proper loot above your light level and how it's supposed to be. Something pretty crazy, they've actually patched the Omnigal farm. You can no longer get multiple loot drops from her. So you can basically only get a loot drop from her once, essentially. I think that means if you try and kill her early, you'll get the loot drop. But if you kill her again, obviously you won't get it. Only once per strike will she drop those loot items. So basically you cannot farm her anymore to try and get to 365 quickly and get those blue engrams. Which is definitely unfortunate for people who haven't got there yet. But of course it is an exploit and it's a very, very quick way to rank up. So you can kind of understand why Bungie would want to fix it. But there you go, I guess you have to farm strikes normally. So you can no longer farm Omnigal. Of course the scares and keys and everything else still works fine. But you can no longer repeatedly kill her to try and get those two blue engrams. They also did some changes to Archon's Forge and the Siva offerings. 
the quarantine patrol missions that you get in the Plaguelands, those now always going to drop an Archon's Forge offering when you kill the Splice Up Priest, so that's a guaranteed way to get you an offering, which is pretty cool. Of course, the rarity is going to vary, but that's a guaranteed way to get one. And also, inside Archon's Forge, it's got a higher chance of dropping an offering when you complete a fate. So there you go, two more easier ways to get offerings for Archon's Forge. I think there definitely are a lot of problems with Archon's Forge at the moment, especially seeing as how the loot drops for people, the rates at which they drop, and the offerings themselves. The fact you can only carry one and you can't like transfer them through Dim anymore, you have to physically go to the vault, it definitely makes things very difficult. So I'd love to see a better system of having multiple offerings and you can stack them up the same way you could do runes. I know it's hard for Bungie to let us choose between the actual offerings because there's only one station you can put them in. So they'd have to come up with some kind of menu where you select which offering you want to put in if you have multiple because there's only one station right now. So hopefully they can come up with some kind of solution for that. Now in terms of some of the problems with Destiny that Bungie are aware of and looking into for solutions very soon, they said they're looking into the artifact and ghost dropping less frequently than intended and making it difficult for players to reach the high light levels after 365. They said in the weeks to come they'll be investigating a solution that provides alternate max light sources for these two slots, the artifact and the ghost. And they said additionally when the heroic raid launches, so hard mode, many activities and all engrams will increase their maximum light, making it easier overall to progress. So that's of course very good to hear, they're looking into some kind of more additional sources for artifacts to drop, which I think is definitely needed. Now in terms of some other issues, they also said the exotic hunter boots, the frosties, those actually slow down your grenade regeneration, they're fixing that. So if you're wearing the frosties, you might want to switch them out for something else, unless you don't mind your grenade being slower, because they are actually bugged and slowing down your grenade. Also the heroic strike place that doesn't count towards strikes in the record book, of course that is an issue that a lot of people are aware of. In the record book you will not get progress towards the strikes if you're playing the heroic players, so of course they're fixing that. Also frame rate issues in the raid, mainly in the death Zamboni and the siege engine stage, that has got some serious frame rate issues to look into that as well. And then finally Deej finished off the update by saying on the other side of the mission there is more to communicate to you about Rise of Iron, there is more to play, more to earn and some more changes up our sleeves. So there we go, that is a roundup of all the latest Destiny news. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, as always a like rating would be much appreciated. Of course subscribe for a bunch more Rise of Iron videos, we've got Trials tomorrow and of course Iron Banner next week and everything else to come including hard mode and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.